This is an easy way to test the basic functionality of a rotary optical encoder with TTL outputs. I have an older BEI unit here, 1000 line encoder. What I did is I stripped the, uh, the power leads. I have common here, the ground, and uh, plus 5 volt input. They're both connected to my power supply. And right here, the red wire is my A channel, and the uh, brown wire is my A naught. It's the complement of the A. Um, basically, it's the inversion. So when the A is high, the A naught's low, and vice versa. They're never at the same logic state at the same time. I connected the, uh, the ground lead of my digital multimeter right here. To the uh, to the common or the ground, and this is my positive lead here. So let me put it on the A channel. Kind of hard to do with the phone in your face, but here we go. Nope. All right, so I'm connected to the A channel now, and I have. 145 millivolts, so I'm at a low logic level. If I turn it, turn the shaft a little, the relays, the clicking you hear are the relays in the multimeter. So I'm at a high there, low logic level there, high. So with TTL logic, you're gonna, um, high logic level is gonna be about three volts to five volts, um, and, a, and a low is gonna be one volt or less, but usually I find um, when I'm working on TTL that they're much closer to uh, zero and five than that, but there is, there is a range for a, a low and high. So right now I'm on a high, 4.98 volts. So my A is high. 4.9 volts. Let's see what the A naught is. It should be a low logic level. It is 154 millivolts. So it's at a low logic level. So one is always opposite the other. So let me turn the shaft a little bit. And uh, there we go. I land myself. Now, now the A naught is at a high logic level. 4.97 volts. So my A channel should be at a low logic level. And there we go, 145 millivolts. So it is. So it, it's the A channel's working properly. As I turn the shaft, I can uh, get it to change to different logic levels. And there are always, the A and A naught are always opposite of each other. It's very touchy because it's a thousand line encoder. Uh, you could do, the, the, the same test applies to the B channel. The, the Z is gonna be a lot harder because there's only one uh, count per revolution. So, but you don't, you don't need the Z channel to, to run a servo motor. The Z channel is really only good for, the index is good for, for like homing but it's not required to run the servo motor. If you have an oscilloscope, you can connect one channel to, of the oscilloscope to uh, both the A and the A naught or the B and B naught. And then when you turn the shaft, you'll be able to see the square wave output. Now I'm just turning this with my finger so it's not steady, the output, if I, if I had a motor turning it would be much steadier but you can see the top two lines are one channel and the bottom two are the complement if you look closely you can see that they're 180 degrees out of phase or the complete inversion of each other and if you had all four going you'd see that the uh the b and b knot channels would be phase shifted 90 degrees and that's how you get your quadrature output on these. A digital scope would, you'd be able to just capture this one shot, but, but for the work I do, I generally prefer an analog scope. It's 
gives me a much, much better trace than I get from a digital. All right, that's it. Good luck with testing your encoders.